thought you'd be used to the heat. <laughs> Why? Well, where you come from. I told you umpteen times I was born here. Where your genes come from, I'm talking about. <laughs> Marks and Sparks. No. <laughs> you know what I mean, funny cuts? <laughs> your past, your roots. Oh, I'd love to know your roots. Mongrel. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh! Oh, it's hot, isn't it? Another party you heard from, isn't it? Marvellous, oh. ain't it? <laughs> A few hot days, everybody's moaning. <laughs> you wait till winter, you'll be looking back on this bit of weather, wishing we still had it. I won't. You will. No, I don't like the heat. What? Prefer to sit and freeze, dear. Prefer to sit there with a icy cold wind blowing through the house, too cold to shiver even. If you was any kind of man at all, you block up some of the holes it whistles through. Can't yet, can we? We need them holes this way, a bit of air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> Pull the ass down a bit. Oh, dear. Ah, it's the trouble this country. It's either too hot or too cold. There's no happy medium, is there? Oh, Gordon Bennett, it's bloody hot though, isn't it? Oof. Who wants to see all that? Her oh, age. <laughs> <laughs> she was at communion last Sunday too. <laughs> I don't know what you've got your shirt all for. You won't get no browner. <laughs> I'm not trying to get any browner. I'm trying to cool off. I'm brown enough. <laughs> A bit too brown for some people's liking. It's not a colour that does you any favours, is it? Shall I tell you a few good things about this colour, shall I? Are you sitting comfortably? Get off of me. <laughs> if you're shy, it hides your blushes. If you drink too much, it hides your blotches. If you get really frightened, you don't go white with fear. <laughs> you know, the first drop of sunshine, I don't have to go rushing out into it to try and get brown, because I am brown all the year round. <laughs> Even in winter, when your pinky people is looking very white and pissed, <laughs> I am still this beautiful, gorgeous brown. Black. <laughs> no, Buena. Brown. This is brown. Them owls in your face full of dirt. Now, that's black. <laughs> Blackheads. <laughs> and your fingernails, see? Black. Your teeth, except for the ones that are other colours, black. <laughs> my teeth, they're my own. If they was mine, I'd have them all out. Nothing, <laughs> nothing wrong with them. And pull corks out of bottles with him. Buena, if you had a white one, you would have a snooker set. <laughs> Look, I am happy with my colour. There's people who spend hundreds of pounds and work hard at all these to get my colour. Hmm. It's just a bit difficult when you try and find somewhere to live. <laughs> You've got somewhere to live. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you're not happy here, Marigold... I didn't say I wasn't happy. Be careful you don't burn out here, huh? It's a pity you don't grow some flowers out here. <laughs> what flowers do <laughs> you want to grow out here? <laughs> well, anything would be better than them few stinging nettles and dock leaves you've got growing over there. I've got... I look, they're yours just as much as mine. Oh, thank you. Disgusting, this backyard is. Look, nobody's forcing you to stand out here. If either of you was a gentleman, I wouldn't have to. Sorry, Mrs. Olingbury. Have a seat. No, thank you. No, no. I wouldn't trust myself. No. Looks as rotten and decrepit as everything else out here. <laughs> Get off. Get off. So you brought the flies out here with you? <laughs> well, it's you they're settling on. No. <laughs> They wasn't here before you come out here. Yeah? <laughs> At least they're our own flies. <laughs> what are you talking about, our own flies? No matter whose flies they are, do it. Well, if they're our own flies, I mean, at least we know where they've been, don't we? Silly great pudding. <laughs> <laughs> 
flies ain't like mice. You can have your own mice. You can't have your own flies. Well, the mice are not ours anyway. Well, it's not the point, is uh, it? No, they've come in from next door. Well, they must be bloody daft, cos I ain't got nothing for them. <laughs> <laughs> Passing through on the way to the corner shop, as you think. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, Lord, it is hot. You think there's find some way of conserving some of this heat, wouldn't you? I mean, nature... Nature's not all that marvellous, is it? I mean, it's too cold in the winter, too hot in the summer. If nature was that clever, it'd spread it out a bit. Well, if God was to use a bit more common sense. If you've got to go down at DHSS, <laughs> you want to get out the sun? Look, never you mind about that. You go over the road and make sure Arthur's got the beer. Go on. Oh, right. I'll put it on ice. Here, you having a party? No, we're going to watch the cricket. See, we can watch it out here, because I'm going to set up an extension. <laughs> you, you get yourself too brown, and the DHSS will think you're just back from your holidays in the south of France. You want to get more money out of them, you want to look all white and drawn and sickly. He does. Oh. <laughs> they might think I'm an, a migrant just off the boat. Then I'll have no trouble getting money out of them, will I? They again? Nah, nothing again. I can't understand it. It's been going on like this for weeks now. They make like they're laying, but there's nothing there. I've changed their diet. Can't understand it. They was good layers. Right, well, I'll be off. Oh. 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 Bloody faces, isn't it? <laughs> Face like a busted sofa, that one. <laughs> Filthy dump, this is, isn't it? Oh, a touch of paint wouldn't hurt, would it? <laughs> well, you don't know who's been sitting on these seats, do you? Oh dear. I don't know why they don't paint the place up a bit. Hand out the paintbrushes with a gyro, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but I've got enough unemployed painters, eh? I've got enough unemployed everything. I've been. Like, don't start on me, <laughs> missus! <laughs> enough problems of my own. Hey, you can be long. Take a seat. Look, I'm not unemployed. I ain't come here begging. Take a seat. What, you on the go slow again, are you, or something? Take a seat. Take a seat. Take a seat. Well, they wind you up in the morning, do they? <laughs> <laughs> they got a cheat to go on strike for more money, that lot. It's the governor. Don't talk to me about that. <laughs> Could be a new government by the time they get around to serving us. <laughs> hey, can you get lunch here? <laughs> <coughs> Could do with a bed here the speed they work at. I mean, if they can't attend to you, they shouldn't invite you up here. I'm a busy man, I'm old age pension, I've got things to do. Mr. Garnet. Ready for me, are you? <laughs> Just gonna borrow some paper and pencil and write home. <laughs> this way. Take a seat, take a seat. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. <coughs> How are you? We all so look forward to these visits. I'll come about me money. What else? Oh, yes. We wrote to you. I wouldn't be here if you didn't, would I? Just refreshing my memory. Not to do with a bit of refreshment. It's a bloody long walk up here in this heat, I tell you. Well, with a bit of luck, this shouldn't take too long and you can be away before the pub's shut. They can stay shut for all the good I get out of them, the money you give me. You're querying the £5 extra the government allowed for heat last winter? That's correct. 
But you've received that five pounds. Not what I'm entitled to, eh? Yes, you have. No, let me explain. There is no explaining to do. Yes, there is. I've checked. You've received the five pounds. Not the five pounds I am talking about. What five pounds are you talking about? <laughs> the extra that I think I am entitled to for living on the end of a terrace. <laughs> If you live in the middle of a terrace, you are warmer than those who live on the end of it, right? I'm not quite with you. People who live in the middle of a terrace are warmer because they can gain up to 1.5 centigrades of heat from the neighbours who live on either side of them. Plus another 1.5 centigrades or more from the neighbours who live beneath them. <laughs> I mean, don't have to be Einstein to work that one out, do you? <laughs> if you live upstairs, you are warmer than the people who live downstairs, because heat rises and spreads itself out. So, those who live downstairs on the end of a terrace should be given more severe weather allowance than the others. <laughs> but it's obvious, isn't it? I mean, so it follows that the more fuel the downstairs burns, the more benefit in additional heat upstairs receives and next door. So, it's not unreasonable to ask that upstairs and next door should contribute to the cost of the extra heat both are benefiting from the unlucky sod who lives downstairs. <laughs> it wants to burn all that extra fuel just to keep itself warm. <laughs> and that's you? That is me, right, and it ain't fair. Well, hmm. Do you have a point, of course? Point, point. But yeah. I'm not sure what view the authorities will take of it. Sod the authorities. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a note and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. File it away from you. Have you tried lagging? Lagging? How do you think I'm going to lag? I mean, how do you expect her upstairs to let me lay lots of lagging for all over her floor, eh? And another thing. This... this pamphlet of yours. Warmth in winter. Perfect. How to keep warm in winter? Hot water bottles. And who's going to pay for the gas to hot the water to put in them bottles, eh? <laughs> I'll see that. Yeah. Yeah, what, what about this? What about this? Keep a well-stocked store cupboard. <laughs> we ain't all poor getters, you know. <laughs> yeah, look, look, have plenty of hot, hot meals and hot drinks, hot this, hot that. It's all hot, innit? Hot, hot. <laughs> hot costs money, my dear. Hot is expensive, hot is. <laughs> This bloody rubbish, eh? <laughs> Got a medical council on now about on about overeating, the dangers of overeating. And for your information, that is overeating without an H. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, more eh? look, health warnings, health warnings on smoking and drink abuse. The dangers, dangers of drinking and driving. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? And stick to a sensible, balanced diet with Plenty of fresh fruit, vegetables and fibres to avoid heart attacks. I mean, how can I afford to stick to a diet like that and old age pension, eh? Where do you think I'm going to get the money from the bowl of fresh fruit and veggies and everything they want me to eat? Hey, well, you tell them to stop worrying, my dear, because I can't afford to eat or do anything that's dangerous to my health. I can't afford to get up in the morning, I can't. <laughs> I can't afford to smoke or drink properly. I ain't got a car, so I can't afford to drive sober, let alone drunk. <laughs> I'll probably live forever, I will, because I can't afford to do anything as bad for me. I mean, what are they saving us for? What the bloody hell are they saving us for? They don't want us. Do that. I mean, you, you live, you live to draw your old age pension, and then you lot try and starve us or freeze us to death. <laughs> I tell you something. The punishment for living too long is to become an old age pensioner. It'll happen to you, don't you worry. You see, your turn will come. <laughs> You're well on the way now. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, no offence, mate. I'm just speaking my mind. That's all. Look, you want to help me? You got any Christian feeling left in you? Well, some of you do, I admit that. You're not all as hard-faced as you look. You want to... <laughs> you want to help me? Let me do a bit of wheelchair pushing. Wheelchair pushing? Yeah, I've done the knowledge. <laughs> you know that. I've pushed my wife around, God rest her soul, for years. You know that. I know this area like the back of my hand. I can push them anywhere, anywhere they want to go. West Ham, up the pub, anywhere. Are you... <laughs> are you volunteering for social activity? I'm not volunteering for nothing, missus. I was in the army. 
one thing you learn is you don't volunteer unless you're ordered. Now, I am talking about earning a few bob. You want paying? Well, blimey, you get paid for doing this, don't you? <laughs> hey, you, you get paid. You're too old, Mr oh, Garnet, to be employed oh, yeah. at social work. Thank you, work. thank you. That is charming, that is. I mean, you can see how your bureaucratic mind works, don't you? I'm too, I'm too old to get paid for it, but I'm not too old to do it for nothing, am I? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr Garnet. All right, well, on your own head be it, Mrs Well, I'll tell you something, it'll be a bloody sight cheaper for you to keep me alive this winter than bury me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got no money. And you'll have to provide the trappings to put me out of the ground. <laughs> I've paid for my last funeral when I had the wife put down. Now, I don't give a monkeys. You want me under the ground? You pay for the bloody hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, Sonny, if I go this winter, I'm going to buy a bloody great stamp, stick it on me forehead and get myself delivered here. <laughs> Can't you watch the cricket in your house, then? No. My missus hates all sport. But you're the man in the house, so... She, <laughs> she doesn't like me in the house. <laughs> she never has done. Before I retired, when I used to come home from work, she used to allow me an hour to have my supper. Then she started getting edgy. Ain't you going out? All other men go out, she'd say. They sit in the pub. Why can't you? Didn't you have any children? I was never in the house long enough. <laughs> now I'm retired, I, I'll sit in the room and she says, how long are you going to be sitting in that room? I'll go to move. She said, don't go in that room, I just cleaned it. <laughs> She's never happy till I leave the house. See, when I was working, I, it was different when I was working. I had somewhere to go, you see. I was out all day. Now I... Go in the park or the pub or the library. It's not so bad when the weather's fine. But what do you do at night? I mean, after the pub's closed, you must go home at night. Oh, she's not too bad then. As long as she knows there's nowhere else I can go, <laughs> she puts up with it. Didn't you ever think about divorce? Hmm? No. Never no need, really. Well, see, in a way, we... Well, we were suited. Hardly ever a cross word. <laughs> well, not from me. You never hardly meet. Just as well, I suppose. <laughs> she, she's a good woman. A bit hard to get on with, I would say. But, you know, I mean, if I had to criticize... Oh, God, there's another one out. This is jolly fight cricket, jolly fight cricket. <laughs> it's a very fine sight the Pakistanis have. And Imran Khan. Oh, he's a prince among cricketers. Where is Mr. Garnet? He should be here to see this. Yeah, he'd be well pleased. <laughs> he likes cricket and football. Yeah, he enjoyed the Falklands too. <laughs> this is very fine cricket. He would like this. It's a shame he is not here. Does he know that you're here? It will be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Hollingberry invited me. She said, come and watch cricket. We have television in backyard and some very good beer. I do not drink beer. I am teetotaler. But I am enjoying British custom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, another one out, another one out. Oh, this is Mr. Garnet, this is a very fine cricket. <laughs> What's this, the League of Nations? <laughs> Said it. Mrs. Hollingberry. Oi, Sabu. Mr. Garnet, <laughs> I brought you some of your favourite tobacco for being most kind to allow me to watch such very good cricket. Oh. Well, aren't you going to say thank you? Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> this is a very fine game, Mr. Garnet. It's a pity your team is playing like. What you say, Marigold? I like a load of wallies. <laughs> but never mind. They are losing in English style. Very graciously. <laughs> oh, oh, another one out! Oh, 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 this is very good cricket. Cricket! Uh, nothing else is on. Cricket! A terrible game! Football! Why is there no football? 
If it was football, we would beat them. Why is it not football? Who invited him? Nobody. <laughs> he just walked in and sat there. What? 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 I don't want to know. Oh, this is very good cricket. Hey, hey, that was never out. That was never out. He cheated. Hey, I look, look. Both of them knows. Yeah, both of them is telling him. Go on, whack him one. Go on. <laughs> Go on, Ian Clout him, bloody coons. The... <laughs> Cricket, is it? I mean, if you can't win fair... We will win fair. We what? are winning fair. Like that? Cheating like that? Imran Khan is not a cheat. Yeah, well, it's the game is the important thing, isn't it? Not who wins. Play the game. That's the British way. That's the Pakistani way, too. We are playing the game. Better than us, that's all. <laughs> us? <laughs> us? Where did you get the us from all of a sudden? <laughs> hey, We beat your lot out in Australia, mate. That is my lot getting whacked by the Pakistanis. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And who was you shouting for when we played the West Indies? Who was your lot then? Hey, answer me that. Go on. I felt very deeply for England's last one. Now. <laughs> but I am a sportsman. I must applaud superior cricket. <laughs> You're a bloody turncoat. That's what you are. Get out of my chair. Here he right. is. Here's Mr Cattell. <laughs> Oi, here. He wants to know if you sell eggs. Oh, no. I do not. I do not sell eggs. Oh, well, I'll have to go up the high street, then. I mean, my wife, she loves her eggs, and me chickens are not laying. I mean, when they was laying, we had all the eggs we want. <laughs> I'm a bit out of touch where to get them. Fresh eggs, I mean. Ask Mr Garnet. He gets lovely eggs, he does, from somewhere. <laughs> really fresh, they are. With muck and feathers stuck all over them. <laughs> Wonderful big yolks. Yeah, he let me have a couple. Yeah, ask him where he gets them from. Mr Garnet. Shut up. I'm trying to watch cricket, all right? Eggs are not good for you. Eggs is too much cholesterol. Your wife should try to live without eggs. I do not sell eggs. But if you want to buy eggs, I will sell eggs. Chickens are better. I do not sell chickens. I've got chickens. So kill the chickens and make soup. Chickens make better soup than eggs. You know, in the old country, my mother's sister, my auntie, she had two chickens. One got sick, so she killed the other one, she made soup, she fed it to the sick one. In no time it was running around like a, a two-year-old. <laughs> a good chicken soup is health-giving. Oh, he's sound, though. I wonder what he's dreaming of. <laughs> well, it's a happy dream. Yeah. He'll be off somewhere enjoying himself. <laughs> and a dramatic moment here at Lord's, we found a really remarkable batsman. I don't know where they got him. They've tried everything they can do. They've tried speed, they've tried seam, spin. He just needs 10 now to make 400 runs, individual runs. And, quite calm. and there it is, going through extra cover. And that's going to be a four. Yes, a magnificent four through extra cover. And the crowd's standing up to him. I must be feeling a bit nervous, just doing a bit of garden there. And he's only got one pair, must have left that one in the pavilion. But uh, he's uh, looking very calm. He just needs six for 400 individual runs. And there's the bowler, Jackson. Very fast bowler. Will he try and stop this 400? 394 now. And here he comes in now. And this is it. It's a six. Is it going to be? Yes, the six up into the corner of the grandstand. And he has made 400 runs here. The feet never achieved before. Balls acknowledging the chairs of the crowd, not with the hair in the process. But what a magnificent cricketer this man is. And so modest and lovely. <laughs> oh, Britannia, marmalade and jam. <laughs> Look, I, I had a phone call, see, from Lords, from the MCC. Mr. Garnet said, Alf, they said, can you help us? We want our revenge on the Coons. <laughs> the West Indies, they beat us 5 0. And now the Pakistanis have done us by an innings. Can you help? I said, hold on, I said, I'll hold me back. I'll get me pads. I'll get a taxi. I'm straight down to Lords. I'm opening the batting for England. I scorn the use of a protective helmet in a box. First ball. Imran Khan, he comes thundering in. Bang. Wallop. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> six, they said. Come on, first. They said it's worth more than six. Out of the taxi. Just the ball back. <laughs> Next ball. Wallop. Out of the bleeding ground. They're going mad. The crowd. All the coons are yelling. Go on, you bald headed honky bastard. <laughs> Bounce one of his balls, not the same. Next ball, wallop, right in amongst them. Ooh, 
You should have seen the bag of scat. <laughs> There's eight curry shops couldn't open that night. <laughs> oh, I said, you gollywogs, let's have you. Come on. Let's have your fast bowlers. This is Alfie Garnet here, not Fat Cat's Bloody Bofum. Come on. <laughs> listen, listen, I ate 48 off the first over. I was 179 not out by lunch. I said, never mind about lunch. I said, I'll bat right through. Come on, listen. <laughs> no, no, they said, no, no, we've got to take lunch. We've got to take lunch. They soon pick up our ways, don't they? <laughs> I go in the pavilion. There's all Majesty the Queen stood there, Duchess. She, she got tears in her eyes. Sir Alfred, she said. Sir, I said, it's in the post, she said. Sir Alfred, she said. <laughs> we want you to take over the captaincy of England. Bobby Robson walks in and says, you can't have him, Mum. We want it for the England football team. <laughs> I accept your resignation, she says. About time we had someone decent in charge of our football. I left them out, I've been a toss. I go out, I'm opening the bowl in for England. First ball, first ball, Gordon Greenwich. Brave man for a darkie. He comes up to the front, he attempts a cover drive. Bang! I broke his back. <laughs> I left him holding the handle. Who he says, look what you've done to my back. I said, have a look behind you, Sambo, see what I've done, you bleeding stumps. <laughs> Next ball, Desmond Ames. What a LBW, you won't forget that day in hurry. I broke his leg through the bleeding pants. <laughs> I put an end to his limbo dance, see what it is. <laughs> Next ball, Viv Richards, West Indies captain. He stood there, he seen me come charging in. I tell you, he's trembling like a leaf. He's turned white with terror, yes. <laughs> well, white as a coon can <laughs> I'm on the hat trick, I'm on the hat trick. You know, all the girls are there, they're all going mad, they're yelling, Alfie, Alfie, we want Alfie. They're all there, Ruckle Welsh, Myrna Lloyd, Joan Collins. <laughs> oh, God. It's the old war wound, Your Majesty. <laughs> Yeah, I could state a tea. Yeah. I'd like to state a tea, yeah. Will Philip be there? I like his manner. He's a man after my own heart, that is. And young Andrew. Chip off the old block, that one. Shame about young Edward, though, innit? <laughs> Never mind, eh? Every family's got one, ain't they? <laughs> oh. Yes, Your Majesty. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would like another drink. <laughs> You'll get me tiddly. <laughs> Mr. Garnet, wake up, Mr. Garnet. Here's a cup of tea. <laughs> Sir Alfred! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>